Let's look at some of the implications of these views and uh, the Nigeria politics in the last few days. Let's talk about uh, these. And I'm being joined by the governor of Nasarawa State, Governor Abdullah Isule. He joins us from Lafia, the capital of Nasarawa. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. Um, let's begin the conversation from the PIB. Um, there is a disagreement uh, between the, uh, the lawmakers and uh, a, a critical question or critical and, uh, part of the conversation is the allocation to the host communities. Some of the, the House largely was deciding on 5%. The Senate had passed 3%. Would you uh, say it's fair uh, and uh, equitable to pass 3% for the host communities, considering the present uh, situation in the country and the agitation that we're seeing from lawmakers from the Niger Delta or from the South South region of the country. Uh, thank you very much, Sheon. Unfortunately for us, in fact, I made a presentation today at the retreat of the members of the House of Reps, you know, on this same issue. Uh, because of my chairmanship of the Northern Governors Forum Committee on PID, and because of my background as an oil and gas engineer, I was asked specifically to, to lead, to come and make a presentation to them. And I try as much as possible to explain to them that this particular issue of the percentages, as well as the frontier, and the 30%, 3%, or whatever it is, they are national issues, they are not regional issues. But because, you know, people have already brainwashed us to make us believe either they are political party issues or they are regional issues, then we hold on very, very strongly to that. That is really a very, very unfortunate situation because of the level of understanding of some of our politicians, you know, when it comes to these particular issues. Now, coming back to, your, to answer your question about the 3% or the, the 30% or whatever percentage that, is, that will be given, you have to look at the totality of what goes to the communities. Is it just the 3% that is going to communities? People have forgotten about the 13% derivation that goes to the states. People have forgotten about NDDC that actually is there, also established, some percentages also go there for the development of the Niger Delta communities. So if you give the 5% or 10% or this, what happened? You know, is it changing the community? Or is it going to some other individuals? So for me, I don't look at it from that angle, you know, but politicians that have very little understanding of the entire structure are the ones who are worried about what percentage actually goes there. So really, I care less about whether it's 3% or 5% or this. The most important is that let us go and take a look at what is happening in the Niger Delta communities. And it is the 30% derivation that is going to the communities, is it helping them? Is the NDDC actually, are we not hearing all the corruption and everything going on in the NDDC? If you even take the 5% or the 3%, are we going to implement it properly? So I think those are the questions that we as Nigerian, we should need to be worried about rather than percentages of this and this and that. You know, so I uh, for me, uh, I share, that's the way I approach it. That's why I say it's a very sad uh, uh, moment. I took so much time, you know, to go ahead and share from my experience of living in the U.S. about how communities are developed, how this is done, and this is a national issue, this and that. And unfortunately, we go back to the floor of the House of Reps, you know, and continue again on the line of uh, a regional issue. You know, it's uh, this issue, 3%, it is 5%, it is 2%, you know, <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's, it's very laughable, uh, I show. That's the way I see it, and, and it's very saddening that we are, we are still at that level. I mean, it does look like the communities or the region is very particular about this matter. It, it doesn't then make it only a technical matter. It makes it now a political matter. Uh, we've seen some kind of peace in the region. I mean, is it not commonsensical and political to also shift grounds for the peace in that region, politically speaking now, that lawmakers should now consider that 5% so that we can have the kind of peace that we're seeing in that region to extend or to keep on? Well, right now it is 0%. Okay? It has not started. Is there no peace in the region? You know, I think sometimes people just make it too political. Right now it's zero. Okay? On that profit aspect of it. 
I have been part of the OGIC in 2005. It is OGIC that actually graduated to PIBB. You know, when we finished the vision 2020-20 in the year 2009, when we started, Funchi Kupoloku was our chairman of the energy committee. And that's how we, we started putting this together. In 2005, we recommended the unbundling of the NMPC that led into this. So is it the percentage? Today is zero. Is there no peace there? So I'm, I'm telling you, Shewin, it's not about percentage. Even if you give them 5%, is that the end of the crisis in the Niger Delta? Of course not. So it is not percentage. I'm telling you, it's deeper than that. Just like with all the other issues that are there, you will see, they will tell you that it is not about that particular issue, it is about 2023. You know, so let's, let's, let's look at the background issues, not just the question of 5%. Unfortunately, even some of our northern legislators who probably do not understand this properly are going either on a party line or on a regional line. You know, and that is, that is the saddening part. But it is not. You know, it's a national issue that we are facing here. Niger Delta today is being neglected. Even with the NDDC in place, what are we get, seeing there? We are seeing a lot of pollution. You know, we are seeing a lot of spillages that are not being taken care of. A lot of the communities where some of these oil operations are going on, you know, we, we do some wash-wash, divide and rule kind of treatment. These are, the, these are the challenges that we are facing. So it's not about 3%. For me, really, I don't mind if they give them 10% or 20%. But or even 1%, you know, is, is the percentage going to bring out the peace? Of course not. Some of your colleagues, uh, the governors of the southern region, they met and they understand. And they said it's 5% that will be fair and equitable. From that point of view, would you agree with your southern governors' co colleagues? No, I don't agree with them. Because if, uh, for me to agree with any southern governor, you see, for instance, the governor of uh, Rivers, Wike, is actually PDP. He belongs to a different political party with me. But every time I see him going to one project or the other, I commend him. Uh, he is from the PDP. The governor of Delta, you know, is also PDP. And every time I see him going one thing or the other, trying to develop the community, bring them out on this, this and that, I commend him. You know, so my, my own is not about party life. But the issue is that you have a governor that maybe probably has done nothing. We have some governors in the Niger Delta, you know, that have continuously, before I even came to become a governor, continuously stealing the money and going to one kind of prison or the other, this and that. And this is the kind of person that you want me to say, yes, he's saying 5%, let me take 5%. You know, that's my position. Question here, Governor, is is it that you don't think that the Niger Delta deserve the five percent? I mean, the host community deserve the five percent, or you think that if it goes there, it might be uh, it might go into wrong ends, it might be uh, siphoned? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, go and ask those who say five percent. What is what is what what is so sacrosanct about sacrosanct about five percent? Why not ten percent? Why not seven? Why not three? What brought about the 5%? Majority of them don't even know where you have. It is 5% of net profit. How about if there is no profit? You know, so some of these people, I'm saying they are arguing, they don't even know the, the subject that they are arguing. Is there a time where there will be no net profit? Because this is about net profit. So why don't you look at 5% of production or 2% of production? Why are we saying 5%? So the, my argument, uh, Sherwin, is about the, some of the people arguing this, they are doing it either based on regional thing or based on political party affiliation. They are not looking at the real subject, the technicalities of the subject. They don't even understand it. Why 5%? Why are we making 5%? And, and, if it, and why are the Northern governors saying 3%? What is the, what's the difference? How much is 5%? You know, or how much is the 3%? Majority of them have no idea. So for me that have this understanding, I can't, be, I can't follow this kind of jamboree and say, yeah, it's 5%. Therefore, the governors are saying that, oh, it's 3%. A lot of them, you know, the work has been already has been done and passed. With due respect, Sharon, if I ask you, how much is 5%? You know, we have no, we are no, we are no figure. It's 5% of net profit. How much was our net profit in the year 2020? How much was our net profit in 2019? So what is 3% of that? Is that amount of money sufficient to develop some of these communities? Yes. Maybe even 1%. And there are times where 10% is not even sufficient. And that is the issue. That, that's what I'm telling you. It's a national issue. That's the direction I'm taking the argument. I'm not taking the argument based on this jamboree is 5% or 3%. So when I went to make that my presentation, 
you know, to the governor during their retreat, I took them away from this mentality. I say, understand the subject first. You know, let us go ahead and do that. Not because everybody is voting 3%, you vote 3%. No, study it. Understand what it's all about. That's my position, uh, I show. That's the debate in the House deadlocked. And uh, some of uh, um, the, the couldn't agree, some of the lawmakers couldn't agree. But with what we have right now, do you think that the hopes of a lot of people thinking that this PIB will help uh, develop the sector and help uh, give a proper administration of the sector, will that hope come alive? Yes, the way we recommended it is going to help. Let me tell you another area of controversy. We recommended 30% and they have passed it. Anyway, these 3% were just debating you and I because they have already passed it. Okay? So the 30% also of net profit, they have passed that. Now, that's another huge area of debate. And they are saying it is to develop the, the frontier. And a lot of uh, people believe frontier is only uh, the, the uh, uh, Benway Trough, the Chad Basin, the Sokoto Basin. This is frontier. That's what I'm telling you about, again, misunderstanding. In the, if you go to the deep water, anything more than maybe 4,000, 5,000 meters of water, where Brazil is operating at the moment, is actually frontier. In Nigeria, when we were doing a lot of the onshore operations and maybe shallow water operations, nobody knew we, have, we had anything, you know, in even the, the deep water until Fanfa and Texaco you know, discovered a bunny where there was about 1 billion barrels of oil there. Then Snepco, which is owned by Shell, discovered another 1 billion barrels in a place called Bonga. Then Erha came up. Then, you know, so all these big water blocks started coming in. So today, we have not gone deeper than that because it is frontier. The definition of frontier is we are the IOCs, that's the international oil company, the Shell, the Mobile, the Total, the Texaco, the, the rest of them are not interested in going because they are going to carry out exploration and it is cost, too much cost work for them. So they don't want to do that. So for that reason, we, we define that who, who is going to go there? Only government. So we are saying we are looking for the resources for that so that we can make it attractive enough for some of these companies to go. And somebody is saying, no, we don't, we don't want to do that. Nobody is taking the money to a particular place. No, they are saying make the provision for the money so that when you do that, you know, so a lot of people have already been brainwashed that Frontier uh, is Buhari who is a president right now and is only interested in that 30% so he can go and develop the Chad Basin or the Benway Trough. And this Benway Trough, by the way, begins from Calabar. Is Calabar not in the Niger Delta? You know, so a lot of them don't even know that. Uh, Benin Basin is also Frontier. An umbrella basin, most of it is, is frontier. Are these not in the south? So that's what I'm telling you. Uh, 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 sometimes I feel saddened that most of our uh, people really don't understand the argument. Somebody is just saying that, no, it's a northern part, it's a southern thing. Oh, it's Buhari that is promoting the north. Oh, it's this. And then somebody will jump into the argument and support that. This is what is happening. And that's why sometimes they require people who have little understanding of it to come and brief them. And if they do that, People go to the floor or they go to the TV stations or go to newspapers or this, and then boom, they go back into arguments. You know? So this is the, this is the problem. Uh, uh, this. It's not because Niger Delta doesn't deserve. Niger Delta communities deserve better than they are getting now. They deserve better than what they are getting from NDDC. They deserve better than what they are getting from 13% derivation. You know, if you are going to, if you, for some of us who work in the Niger Delta, if you go to certain communities, their water has been polluted. They can't even drill a borehole, you know, to this. So for the, even for the fear of God, wouldn't you take care of those kind of people? And so that is, that is the issue. That's the basic, the basic thing. But some of the people pushing these arguments are people that are... Yes, That's sorry, okay, I, I, think, but I, I have it. one last question for you. Yes. And it's going to be about the amendment to the Electoral Act, uh, which your party, uh, which is a majority in the National Assembly, uh, some uh, opposition lawmakers said they have bullied them into what they want and how they wanted it. And I'll get your view after this break. Join us again, everyone.
Thank you so much. Our concluding moment with uh, Governor Abdullah Sule, the Executive Governor of uh, uh, Nazareth. said. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time. Well, if you see what happened on the floor, which we uh, laid some premise earlier on, uh, your party, the APC, holds the, the majority seat in the National Assembly. But the minority seems to feel that they have been politically oppressed based on the amendment to the Electoral Act, as really in the Senate, uh, as to how they amended, for example, the Clause 52 of the Electoral Act. Um, uh, and uh, let me get your view on, on this one, because the allegation is that there is a grand plan of rigging for 2023. But your party, the APC, holds a majority seat in yeah. the National Assembly, especially in the Senate, and perhaps some of the minority lawmakers feel politically oppressed by the happenings of last week, where some of them could not have their say and not have their way. Now, in, in, in that sense, uh, the allegations uh, that some of them are raising is that there is a grand plan to rig the election come 2023. Let me get your view on that. Yeah. I think you said, uh, you, you mentioned two things, you know, some of them couldn't either have their say or have their way. I think it's more with the second. Either have their way is probably the reason why they work out. For some of us that live in advanced democracies, I have seen a lot of work out in the U.S. Uh, uh, Congress anytime they didn't have their way, and it is normal. So if uh, people work out because they don't have their way, it's also in line with... Uh, with, uh, with, with democracy, even in advanced democracies, you know, I was I was in the U.S. many times. Oh, we were having problems, you know, about uh, uh, Bill Clinton. You know, people were trying to impeach him, and then when they were not getting their way, of course, the Democrats walk out. So working out is normal in situations like this. And today they walk out because they strongly believe that the northern uh, legislators, you know, were getting ready to rig the elections. That's why I told you. So the bottom line is 2023. So they are getting ready to rig elections in 2023. That's the reason why they do that. If you ask the northern legislators, why are you doing that? They say, well, they invited somebody from NCC, and NCC told them that we don't have network. Now, coming back to our, our own, that we are outside the, 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 the National Assembly, you know, is it true that Nigeria does not have proper network? It is true. Anybody who wants to be very honest with his or herself will tell you that, yes, it depends for some of us who travel by road many times. If I'm traveling between Abuja and Kaduna, many times, you know, there are so many uh, villages or so many spots where there is no network. So it is possible about de-enfranchising some other uh, uh, villages, you know, when it comes to this. So it's the same thing. When I'm traveling from here, you know, going all the way to Pidda or something like that, we have this kind of problem. Maybe it's more in the north than in the south. But unfortunately, again, just like the PIBBL, there is a lot of misunderstanding that it is the northerners who want to rig. The region in Nigeria and about population in the north, it started not now. It started during the era of Sedona, of Sokoto, and the rest of that, when somebody said they were counting their goats and sheep and things like that, if you remember. So it is not, not, no, it, it is not news anymore. It is actually a reality that has been going on. Now, people say there was proper election. You know, in 2015, people believe in that election. So in 2019, there was a resemblance of that. So why are we so afraid of 2023? You know, it is all because of the presidential thing that who is going to be president? For me, I have said it to you, I uh, shown many times, that believe me honestly, for fairness, I have no problem about having a problem from the South. We have had problems from the South in the past. We have had Obasanjo, we had Jonathan. And so if we have another one, so be it. You know, there is, I don't have any fear inside me for for a president from the South. So the problem we are facing is about the people who are trying to be president. We believe, you know, they have to bamboos their way to do that. And you can't do that. Because politics is about being able, you know, to talk to people, understand what is happening, lobby people, get it done. You know, you can't do it by force. So that's the way I, I see it. So it has nothing to do with anything, whether there is network. Everyone knows that network issue, it is an issue in Nigeria. Even in some major cities, sometimes you call, they say there is no network. So if there is not, what happens on the day of election if there is no network? So those places cannot be counted, or they cannot transmit. I think these are the, these are the issues on the table. So I think sometimes we just have to wake up and be able to tell each other the truth. 
and face it and forget about all these sentiments, whether it is southern or northern thing and things like that. That's the way I, 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 I see it, I show Sincerely, thank you, Your Excellency. Governor of Nasarawa said, Governor Abdullah Isfile, thank you so much for your thought tonight. Thank you so much.